guys, it's just cause by Sarah. Lately I've been getting a lot of questions asking about um, embossing paste and different mediums. So I'm doing a short series on a bit about the products. So this in front of you is embossing paste. Um, a lot of you would know embossing powders, which is a powder form that you would use with the sticky pad to stamp and then you would put the powder over the top with heat gum. But these are totally different. These are great for stencils, again, texture, and they've got the consistency like icing or cottage cheese, but they have the look of texture paste in a way. Um, the great thing about these is they're light, they're thin, and you can use them with a lot of mixed media techniques. And like I said in my other video, this with texture paste, to be honest, they're very similar. The, there is some differences with colouring and stuff. Um, I find texture paste will colour a bit better than embossing paste, but... It depends for the looks you're going for. As you can see in front of you, um, Wendy Vecchi released with Ranger embossing paste. And I have the translucent, the white and the gold. But it does come in also a crackle one, which I have not tried. I'll show you what the techniques of these products do. I try to keep a swab at my desk so I know what the products do. And I'll just pop that up. So as you can see, here is Whip Sparkle. Hopefully you can see that. And there is that Finnabar paste that I mentioned. Then down here is the embossing paste. So again, it dries matte. And it's very creamy. Here is the translucent. So the translucent does have a gloss look to it. And the... Sorry guys, the white and the gold. So the gold would be here, right here. So it's got that glossy look to it, just like embossing, um, embossing powder would have. But I find the white doesn't. So that's a different look there. But it's absolutely gorgeous. And again, if I sprayed over the top of this, this would be resisted because it's very glossy. So which is a great technique for if um, you want to keep the design that you've already got there and not have it hidden so um, that's another look at another product and I will also go into detail today and talk about glazers and be gel Bead gel is a relatively newer product in art lines. Um, it's this. It's called glass bead gel. Basically, what it is is a clear glue gel medium, and I've obviously had some glue on the edge. And in this one, a lot of them don't come with glitter, but this one actually comes with glitter, and also inside it is little micro beads. So you're not going to be able to see in the jar. Hopefully it'll focus sometime. But again, it's thick, it's creamy, it's got like the cottage cheese consistency. And it's not going to tip out on me. Um, and I'll just show you what it looks like when done. Because it's always good to have... Um, to know what it looks like when it's been used. Sorry guys, I should have had it out. I'm not always prepared, as you can tell. Sorry, now I can't find it. Okay, sorry. Okay, here is me using that paste. So you can see the glitter there, and I've used a Finnabare stencil from Prima. And you can see the micro beads in it. You can see the glitter, and you can see that texture. How awesome is that? I really love it, and it's got a glossy look to it. Um, but the glue will dry. Can you see that? 
So the glue will dry at the end and all that will be left is the look of the microbeads and the, gl and the glitter. So it's just a different look and creates texture and it's really pretty. Next, the glaze. The glaze is a great product if you've got gelatos. You can um, use it over the top of your gelatos to seal it because, as you know, gelatos are water-based. So as lo long as you add water to it, it will react um, and any liquids. Um, the same with Tim Holtz products because they're water-based. Again, they will react and dye inks. But with glaze, it's a great product that you can then create with your pigment inks that you have um you can create paints so and you can create texture so as you can see what i've done on this i've just mixed some micro micro beads i keep on i'm obsessed with micro beads glaze and i've mixed pigments and it's created this really funky bright paint and i just love it i've just scraped and some parts resisted, others haven't, but it just turned out lovely. And I love that. And it's just multiple colours laid over the top. And all I've used is um, perlex, or you could use primary elements, or um, polished pigments. So you really have a lot of choices with this. You can also use it as a top coat. And I'm also going to go in into... Um, a couple more products. They may as well just finish. Okay, there's another product out on the market. I got this recently. Finabar does um her version of it also, and it comes in fine sand and black sand. This one is called Texture Sand Paste, and it's exactly what the name says. So it's texture paste with sand in it. So it creates it creates great texture and also. The great thing about it is you get that coarse effect. So if I rub my finger across it, it's really coarse. It you can feel the lumps and bumps. Same as the bead gel. So that is another look that you could go for. Um, you could use it for a beach theme, or you could just go for using it. And then spray over the top. Imagine the look you would get with the spray mixing in, and it would be darker and lighter in some spots. So that's just another look for texture. Another one out on the market, Finnabears recently released is the 3D matte gel and the 3D gloss gel. The only difference is matte, obviously um, not shiny, gloss shiny. So with this one. I can use it with my stencils. It's thicker consistency. And the great thing is, as you can see, really thick. Not runny. And it's not like Mod Podge or any of those type of mediums. Like matte medium. Hang on. I'll just move this out of the way. These two products are basically the same. Matte medium, matte gel, gloss gel. Okay, I'm just going to put it. They're all different brands, but they basically do the same thing. The matte gel and them are basically exactly the same, and these are different variations. So with the matte medium, you get a runnier version. It's This one's more like Mod Podge, if you know what Mod Podge is, um, but you've got that matte look to it. So it's great for um, if you need a thinner type of... Um, glue or this one is actually really good for um oh, what's the word oh my brain's not working today um for a finished coat over the top when you're done but you can also use it as glue um you can also use it to create paint with mixtures like you can do a number of things you can mix it with paint to create pastes like there's a ton of things you can do even with the matte gel, this again and this is thicker. You can actually use these with stencils, which is great because a lot of people don't want to use texture paste because it's heavy and it's bulky and it creates di like it creates dimensions so it's 3D. Where a lot of people want the effect, but they don't want that bulk. 
so the great thing about matte gel is it doesn't give you that bulk so I'll show you up here hopefully you guys can see that in this frame I've used the matte gel uh, the gloss this is actually gloss the one down there's matte but matte is basically non shiny this is shiny and then I've sprayed over the top of it where with this one is more of a 3d effect so it will bubble if you heat gun it too close and it will give dimension like texture paste but it's a clear transparent version of texture paste but the great thing is you can also use it as a glue you can also use it as a top coat you can also use it um, with your beads micro beads and your beads that beads your glitter your seed beads and all them sort of fun things that are out on the market with this what I basically did was I put a stencil down I scraped the 3d matte gel which created the dimension then I went over the top with all the beads and they stuck and that's basically how I created this look but you can also mix it as on your desk and use the beads and use a dollop and mix it up and then you can use it that way and scrape it on like I did on this tag over here and it will dry clear this one it has, still hasn't dried yet but it will dry clear and you can also see I have done the same thing with the stenciling and gone over with the micro beads so that is just another look again and what I'm going to show you next is um, gloss gel again same technique same basically but you've got that gloss look so it's got the same properties iridescent medium um, I love this product and I use it a ton of times because basically what it is is it's a iridescent creamy Product. so I'll show you here can you see that shine isn't that gorgeous so can you imagine adding your pigment to that so your pigments will take it'll take on the color of the pigments fantastic and the great thing about matte gel gloss gel and all them ones if you're wanting to add pigments to them they are the products to add them to because they will hold its true color we're mixing it with texture paste you will get more of a pastel color because it's a white base paint so you're basically dulling down the color um, but with the iridescent medium the gloss gel and all that you will get its true color and you'll still get its shine where unfortunately using the texture paste and gesso you will lose your mica like the glittery effect and you will also lose sort of that shine it'll go more like a paint like a matte paint um but i just love this product so as you can see iridescent medium and there's that gloss gel so it's very glossy okay and then the last thing is gesso gesso is a primer and it comes in a number of colors um I find a lot of people like to use it um, for like I said priming um, because it gives the paper a tooth to stick to um, I find a lot of um, papers don't like to stick to wood um, and even cut like thick cardboard like the book boxes are so basically adding that gesso gives it something to stick to um, basically gesso comes in a number of colors you can get it in black white super heavy gesso and you can also get it in clear um, again all got the same properties except the color um, the only difference is with super heavy gesso you're getting a more heavier bodied gesso so I'm going to show you Gesso is just sort of like white paint. I find a lot of people create drips, splatters. They water it down so they get a better splat. Um, you can use it to uh, white, like tone down your flowers or just do the edges. 
a lot of people use it with masks um, but I would recommend if you're going to use it with masks use the super heavy gesso because gesso um, because it's thinner it gets all underneath the stencil and it the design never looks right um, but I'll show you so this is gesso it's brand new and as you can see it's running out of the jar as I tip it so it's a real thin consistency where the super heavy gesso is more like a texture paste but it's a gesso and they all have a matte look so they dry like a matte see nothing is moving like it's rock hard even tapping it nothing's coming out And again, the clear just dries clear. So that's just a different technique. But to be honest with you, now that I've shown you all these products, do you have to have them? No. Um, a lot of people think they have to rush out and buy them all. You don't have to rush out and buy them all. It's basically trial and error. It's playing. It's having fun. And there's a lot of products out on the market. Like I said, I have a tutorial on how to make your own bead gel. Um, and I've also got a tutorial on me on how to make your own texture paste and also make your own sprays so you don't have to rush out and buy stuff um, but just have a look around take it all in and if you have any questions let me know but hopefully I've answered some of your questions and not got you more um, puzzled and confused but um, I'll talk to you later. Hopefully that helps. Bye. Hey guys, it's just Cards by Sarah. Today I'm going to start a series of videos about mediums. I get asked a lot of questions about mediums and I think a lot of people are stumped how they work and what their uses are and stuff like that. So today my video is going to be about texture paste. Okay. As you can see in front of me, I have got mediums out so I'm going to do some short videos for you guys. I think long videos is just confusing to people and um, yeah, so I'm going to do it this way. So, I'll move these ones and I'll move these ones out. Okay, so see the ones in front of you. Okay, so we've got Whip Spackle from Fiber Castell. We've got Texture Paste. From Finnebear. You know how much I love Finnebear. Uh, and that's Anna Dabrowska, and that's Prima. This is the Ranger Texture Paste. And I got this from Renee Bouquet. Light Texture Paste. This again is from Finnebear from Prima. And the same brand, but this is gold. Okay, Texture Paste. The great thing about texture paste is it's a dimensional texture so basically you can use it with stencils you can spread it on you can use um, different tools to um, press into it you can use stamps you can even use from my local hardware I purchased these tools and they're meant for tiling um, but I had purchased them for the purpose of scrapbooking and I thought, oh, that's going to be great. And I'll just get the two of them out. So I can scrape that into the texture paste to get different impressions and then spray and it just gives a great look when I'm doing uh, a big metal project. Texture paste can be coloured. Um, you can add perlex, you can add pigments like, um, sorry, I'm trying to think of a color my head, primary elements or any of those type of colors um, can be added. I wouldn't recommend using Perfect Pearls because it doesn't have a high pigment uh, of color. So I would go for ones that have high pigment. Um, and that will color and it comes up absolutely gorgeous I use text paste all the time and I sometimes have been known to make my own using baking soda Mod Podge and um, Mod Podge texture paste and tackle powder um, but I know it's so much easier just to buy your own 
Um, but on the market recently, they've got um, texture paste and they're coming in every single color. Um, and a lot of the Finnebear ones, she's released like the metal kind of colors like graphite. Um, she's released silver. She's released gold and like a platinum color. So there's a lot of um, different ones. But they all offer different looks and this is where people get confused. So I'm going to go through them quick. The Texture Paste from Ranger, it's a recent product. It is great. I find um, when using it with a stencil, it shows up really well. I have used it on this. Actually, no, I haven't. I haven't just did that one on this piece of paper. Sorry, guys. Um, it's really... Funny thing is, it's really thin. But it's so fluffy. It's so creamy. It's like icing. And I basically would say the Whip Spackle by Fiber Castell and the Ranger Texture Paste are very similar. But the Texture Paste from Ranger has a different, another different positive to it. It absorbs colour fantastic. See, with Texture Paste, a lot of the bases have been mixed with gesso, but gesso resists the sprays. So... What I find with this texture paste, it will take colour fantastic and it was designed that way so that you could use your Dilutions and your Tim Holtz products with it. The Whip Spackle is great too. It's light, it's fluffy, it's creamy. I just love it. It's one of my favourite products. And oh, just look at it. Isn't that gorgeous? You just, like, you could eat it. Um... And I just love it. It spreads nice and you can colour it also with your gelatos if you want to. So that is uh, a positive and they both colour. All these products colour well. So I wouldn't go, I wouldn't say that. Okay, the next product is Finnebar and it's the gold. This is texture paste and it comes in a gold colour. The awesome thing about this is it's crackle and so is these two. So this one's white and this one's gold. I am a gold fan lately. Don't know why. I mean, I wear silver jewelry, but I like gold when I'm crafting. So what I'm going to say to you is this is a fantastic product. It's um, thicker than the Whip Spackle. So it's got a heavier, um, it's like heavier, I don't know how to, body to it. And it will take longer to dry. But you get the great crackles in between and I think that's a great look sometimes um, and great if you want like a crackle on the side of an uh, altered project or you may just want crackle texture paste but it's so nice. I'll show you and hopefully it's right here. Can you see those cracks? The thicker you use it, the thicker your cracks. The thinner you use it, the thinner the cracks. And the other gold is up so as you can see, I put it thicker in some spots, thinner in others. So you get that look. So my last one is Finna Bear's light texture paste. She has two range, two texture pastes, one thick and one thin. I actually went for the thinner one because I wanted to try it out. Light texture paste is very similar to the no ordinary texture paste, but it's what it says lighter and that's basically all its characteristics is it's got all the types you can color it you can um, spray over it you can do whatever you want with it and it's an opaque matte so it will dry non shiny basically so um, I hope this tutorial helps you and if you have any questions please leave them below and I will see you later.